since early December 2011. The Canadian news has been bombarded with issues concerning Aboriginal populations across Canada, but particularly in Attawapiskat First Nation, where living conditions have become a tragic problem for the health of its population. My name is Tom Jackson. It's December 21st, 2011. I need to go to Attawapiskat to help its people find some joy and to give them a voice. My musical friends and I traveled from Thunder Bay to the Cree community of Attawapiskat, a fly-in community located in the remote location of Northern Ontario, a three-hour trip from Thunder Bay on a small plane. You should be aware of a few little-known facts. In Canada, First Nation people were not allowed to vote until 1960. There were First Nation sterilization programs in effect from 1933 to 1980. An experimental biological warfare and mind control project called Paperclip, using native children from residential schools, was in effect from 1946 to 1970. It was illegal to travel off reserve without a pass. It was illegal to practice spirituality, to hire a lawyer. In fact, it was illegal for a lawyer to defend Indians and Indian land disputes. We were welcomed by the community members. <laughs> and I met with Chief Teresa Spence to talk about the stress factors faced by the community. <laughs> you know, we have population of 1,800 here. There's other type of conditions that we have in our communities, uh, molt, overcrowding and uh, people live in sheds and tent frames. And the trailers that's available is already overcrowding. So, you know, like, this crisis is not gonna ever stop until everybody has their own house. It is not uncommon for some First Nation families to live in large groups. When those groups move into inadequate housing with little food and money, they grow hungry and sick. Some are living in minus 30 degrees Celsius in wood-framed canvas top tents with no plumbing. We can only imagine how the students and their grades would be positively impacted by simply giving them decent places to sleep and a decent diet. A healthy community with educated children would be a great start. It's a familiar goal for many chiefs. It's been very dark and quiet with the government. What they know about First Nations, they've been receiving a lot of studies on our water intake and our housing or even our education. And there was even a declared emergency on, uh, on suicide. She goes on to say, the problem is that 80% of all funding they get from the government goes out of the community to pay for consulting fees, building materials, transportation, etc. This is the room I just moved out of two weeks ago. My husband converted the room closet into bunk beds. So I had two of my young boys sleep here. I had four Tupperwares on top, on top here, and four Tupperwares in the bottom. And I had about eight duffel bags of clothes here, the kids' clothes, and I had a double bed and we slept sideways. And I had a little refrigerator here too, I had a TV, just to have, have all the family in one place. And how many people, tell me again, in this room? There was six of us in one bedroom. Six yeah. lived in this bedroom? Lived in this bedroom, yeah. Two adults, two teenagers, and two young ones. Awesome. And this is it. This is one. 10 by 10. Yeah. yeah. Canada's backlog with regard to First Nation housing 
is 80,000 homes. The living conditions are worse here in our own backyard than they are in third world countries. Since 1893, people have been born and have lived their entire lives in Attawapiskat. These children will grow up to become adults, but they need proper housing and education in order to be healthy. How will the children's lives be different from their parents? More than half of First Nation people in Canada are under the age of 25. Will they have a roof over their heads in a few years? Hmm. We as human beings must make change. We all need to bring awareness to the living conditions of the people of Attawapiskat. We can no longer let children grow up in unacceptable conditions nor deny them the best opportunities available. Unfortunately, the story of Attawapiskat echoes that of many First Nation communities in our home and native land. It is unacceptable that we have third world conditions within such a rich and proud country as Canada. I pray that there is a will and a determination to change for the better. That the decision makers remember the little ones. It matters not what color the skin is. It matters that we provide the means to allow the children of Attawapiskat to learn and grow as the children of Canada. The children of Attawapiskat, like those of any other community, deserve continued engagement in the dialogue about the future of their communities and from the government, a renewed and real commitment to positive change. Where the heart will lead, the mind will follow.